So good morning. Thank you for uh, joining us. And off we go down the Rio Grande um, in the canoe I wrapped on the San Juan. There we go. So the um, environmental education need. So how many people know the, our friend over here on, on your left? Raise your hand if you, know, if you can name who that is, right? And how many people can name these, a these animals on the right? And um, so, so what are they? Right, um, the, that's Mario on the, on the left and uh, Turtus migratoris, our uh, American robin on the right. And so um, oftentimes we think, especially when we move in natural resource circles, that kids know um, things that are so readily seen in a part of literature, um, like a robin. And I have students who go to Red Robin restaurant but can't identify a robin in the field. And so one of the things that we recognize is that there is this environmental education need. The other thing we recognize is that um, there are many underrepresented audiences, particularly in New Mexico, that are not um, equally proportional to their presence in the workforce. And that's particularly true for Hispanics, Native Americans, uh, women, and African Americans. And so um, one of the things that we're trying to do is figure out ways to provide environmental education and to provide opportunities in science, technology, engineering, and math that will engage students from a wide range of uh, backgrounds. And so we do that through citizen science, the idea that uh, somebody who's not a professional scientist can actually contribute to a research effort that will ultimately stand up to peer review. And the idea is to get people spending time in the field, but actually having what they do matter uh, to some end user. And there are small scale um, projects that are local, like this one in New York City, where people, or when they see a coyote, they report it um, in a simple system. Um, and this coyote's like riding on a train or a subway. I don't know what the difference between a train or a subway is, but the, I can tell that that's some form of public transportation, um, not a Prius, and it's going down the road with a coyote in the middle. There's some local projects, too, that you may have heard about. This is one of my favorites, uh, the Project Jackalope that takes place. And then there are some national international programs. So Globe at Night is an example of citizen science tracking uh, constellations and their, um, how they're affected by light pollution. Can you really see the star within, or a particular star within a recognized constellation type of thing? Um, while we speak here, uh, gathering in uh, San Jose is a citizen science conference and it's the first meeting of the professional society of citizen scientists and so that organization is going to start with its own citizen science um, peer-reviewed publication and uh, things that have emerged over decades like the Great Backyard Bird Count or the Audubon Christmas Count are citizen science efforts that have had long standing. And of course, the technology has allowed that to grow quite a bit. And in terms of Tamarisk, uh, does anybody know Audrey? Yeah, she's great, right? And what'd she do? On what? Tamarisk leaf beetle. She put kids on rafts and, and threw them down the river. And it's like going through a rapid counting salt cedar beetles. Not bad. Cool stuff. Anyway, so that happened. And now I turn over to the real meat of the program. Here we go. All right, so my name is Grace, and I'm a sixth grader at Bosque School. So we call the Bosque the Bosque because it means forest in Spanish. Um, this is obviously what the Bosque and the Rio Grande looks like. Um, there are a bunch of whales in the Rio Grande. Well, maybe not lately, but. Um, so this is a picture that Mr. Shaw took in El Paso, and there's a dead fish and some trash. So that's what it looks like. So BEMP, it stands for Bosque Ecosystem Monitoring System. 
And BEMP is where we get kids from all over New Mexico and we get them to do hands-on learning with science. So we have um, like what our mission is we want to restore the Bosque's beauty and make sure it, it stays like that. Okay, hi, so I'm Lauren. I'm also a sixth grader at Bosque. Okay, so, <laughs> okay, so what makes the Bosque the Bosque is things like the floods, fires, and changes that humans make to it. Um, we have tons of different bump sites around New Mexico with tons of different people helping. So we have about 9,997 bump people helping, um, plus us three here. And we also have partners and people who sponsor us and help us. And people also use our data, such as NM State, which they take our data to use it to make, like, answer questions about the Bosque. So I'm Rosa, and I'm also a sixth grader at Bosque School. And one of the types of data we collect in Bemping is the groundwater, depth to groundwater. So we take this machine, which is called a beeper, and we drop it into a well. And when it makes this sound, we know we got water. And so we take the measurements and we track from site to site and from month to month. And this is really important because cottonwood roots only go down three meters, and we need to make sure they're getting enough water. So these are some examples of depth to groundwater. So as you can see at Okay Oka Owinge, the groundwater table is very close to the surface. And in some of the local sites like Alameda and Montano and Savannah, they're um, a lot farther down. So another, another BEMP thing that we do is we take leaf litter bins and we collect the plant matter inside of them and send them away so scientists and students can sort them and see how many exotic and native plants are in that area of the bosque. Um, another BEM thing is the surface active arthropod traps. So the arthropod will walk along the ground and then they'll just fall into the cup where we collect them. And this is important because we can figure out the diversity and abundance of arthropods in the bosque, although you occasionally find a dead lizard in the cup. <laughs> so um, one of the examples of the arthropods we trap are the carabid beetles. And these beetles are important because they in where they are, that indicates that there's moisture in the soil. So at Okeowenge, where the water table is higher, there's more of these beetles. And also, Bosque, um, BEMP, sorry. BEMP is currently monitoring the number of tamarisk leaf beetles at our site. So the green dots indicate where they are present, and the red dots indicate where we have checked, but they are not present. OK. So we have different grade. well, we have all grades working with this, and the different grades do different jobs according to their skill level. Um, so the skill level of the student will be matched to the skill level of the job. Oh, right. Okay. So I like Bosky because, well, sorry. Okay, I like BEMP because it's kind of connecting with the Bosque and you just really get the feel of the nature and it's really nice. Um, BEMP has been very meaningful to me because, well, it's really a powerful feeling to be out there in the field collecting data that really, really matters for our Bosque. Um, BEMP is a really good way to get started of being a scientist. When I grow up, I want to be a scientist. So this was like introducing me to science and how I can get involved in it. Okay, so in 2001, um, a sixth grade Bosque student named Thomas Nichols, right? Okay. Um, he heard that 
beavers were eating the bosky cottonwood trees and that they tried to stop the beavers from eating the trees by killing them. And he thought this was very wrong. So he actually came up with a way to protect the beavers and the trees from getting killed. So what he did was he put chicken wire around the trees to protect it from the beavers, but the beavers could still live. All right, so now in 2008, um, they some sixth graders went back and they saw maybe like what, how the child, how the trees were doing, and um, if the if they needed to put more chicken wire around them, if they needed to take some chicken wire off, and all the trees were fine. But now, in 2014 and 2015, we need to, um, we need to fix them now because. We have been looking at them, and they're not doing that well, the trees. So we have all the beavers we need, and we're not going to kill them. So what we need to do is we're going to – so what we're going to do is we need to loosen the chicken wire around the um, trees. So – and if you think of, like, a corset on a tree, that's pretty much what it is. It's sucking it in, and it can't grow anymore. So what me and Lauren are going to do is we're going to go and we're going to check on them and we're going to do the hands-on working. And our motto is to save the beavers and protect the trees. And so as we uh, jump from this, Thomas Nichols is now in the Air Force. He went to the Air Force Academy. He's flying jets um, for the Air Force. Um, Darren McDevitt, who came in in 2009, now has a wildlife degree uh, from Montana, and she's up in Montana working grizzly bears. And so there's really been this progression of these students in this program across time. And I'd like to speak to that for a moment. So we have all different kinds of work being done. We have two cadres of uh, interns in our program that deal with quality control. um, And one of them are our professional staff. And the second are uh, students who are in the UNM internship class. And so we deploy them out. And their uh, role is to be a mentor, to really advocate for be cool, stay in school, uh, carry that message forward. And they're also uh, working with students from all different kinds of backgrounds. Within BEMP, most of our students are from Title I schools, high poverty um, schools with kids with very little opportunity. Oftentimes, uh, BEMP will be their only science experience throughout their school year because of the focus for preparation for the park exams and things like that. Um, We looked also at our paid staff interns, um, both high school and college and students who did research with us for an extended period of time of at least a semester. And with it, and these are different than the UNM high school or UNM college seniors and graduate students. And so uh, most of them say that we help motivate them to go into a natural resource field. Um, and we find that most of them are still now in a college degree program moving towards a natural resource or science field or in career as a natural resource. Uh, in a natural resource setting. We, we have all sorts of uh, wonderful testimonials, blah, blah, blah. Um, and a couple things. If, if you're interested in doing citizen science, you should know a few things. One is um, it's not free. Uh, it does require your time and your money to help manage that. They have specific goals uh, of why they get involved in the program and why they stay involved in the program. BEMP has been doing this work since the 96-97 school year. So this is really sort of our 19th year of being involved in one level or another of this project. Um, And so reasons that people actually get involved, why teachers um, choose to have their classes, um, it really comes down to the hands-on learning in a field setting, opportunities for real science that Rosa referred to a moment ago, and the opportunities to study environmental issues and awareness. There's also other, other pieces to that. But they really want to do real science. The teachers want it, and the kids want it. Um, and what gets in their way? Well, for some, uh, we ask, what's going to keep you from getting involved in this next year? And, and these are studies that we've done across multiple years. Uh, but travel and transportation becomes a big problem. So we've uh, had partners like uh, Bernalillo County, um, 
the Albuquerque Community Foundation, the Middle Rio Grande Conservancy District that have helped to fund buses to get kids out into the field. Most of our funding is actually providing deliverables to agencies um, and that it's being done by um, K-12 students is kind of secondary. Um, if you're curious about what else our high school and our college students do, if you're in Albuquerque on Tuesday, 3rd of March, uh, from 4 to 7.30ish, we will be doing a what we call a Crawford Symposium, which celebrates uh, Cliff Crawford's uh, work was a founder of this program, BIMP. Um, and we'll be um, sharing the stories of people making a green trail, high school students and college students and graduate students who are doing research within BEMP and in partnership with BEMP and others. And we're making a difference one student at a time. We're looking for action, resilience, and community um, in that way that um, we really want it to have meaning for kids beyond the classroom, and we want it to provide an opportunity for them to engage in science across time. We have lots of different partners. Um, I'm going to go through this slide quickly because if your name should be on it and it's not, I apologize. But you didn't notice it wasn't on. It was further down. You just didn't see it. Okay, so we're not, now we're back to questions. Or do we still have how much time we have? Okay. Thank you so much, Dan, Rosa, Lauren, and Grace. We have just a few minutes for questions. So, so is the BEMP program um, just in the Bosque School? Is it in other public schools? That's the quick answer, but yeah, lots of them. Um, they're just happy. They're just. Um, I thought so. I guess like last the end of last week, it was like, why am I going to talk about this when I could have some sixth graders who actually do it talk about it? And so it was easy for me to grab them with less than 24 hours notice that they're going to come up and talk to a bunch of people. So they really had no sense that this was happening um, until just a little bit ago, and, and they scripted themselves. Um, so you ladies mentioned some specific projects that you were working on with the beavers. Are there opportunities for the students to do independent research for science fair projects, that type of thing? Um, yes, there is. We are actually going to have some of the students from other schools be doing it too. So they, w like students, will have opportunities to get in projects and do the hands-on, like getting the chicken wire and putting it around. So, yes. My name is Jennifer Schutz. I am the science coordinator for Bosque Ecosystem Monitoring Program. I am based at the University of New Mexico instead of Bosque School. We're, we're a partnership between UNM and Bosque School. I do mentor students and my coworkers also mentor students from usually in the Albuquerque area so we can have, um, you know, hands-on mentorships with K-12 students with science fair projects. But um, if anyone needs anything from a distance, I'm, I'm happy to help them in any way possible. Yeah. We just, um, I guess, I guess a, a specific example of someone who I'm really proud of is is one student who started off volunteering with them. And then we worked with him on soil, soil carbon sequestration, uh, sequestering carbon from the air into the soil. We then noticed it was actually the microbes actually doing the work. So then he went off to work with some professors in the, in the biology department doing more microbial work. And he went all the way to the International Science Fair last year and this year he's ready to win at the International Science Fair. Now he's doing microbial, he's doing PhD research. Uh, he's a 10th grader. So. He's at the Albuquerque Institute for Math and Science. Yeah, public charter school. 